So thank you. So what we are going to say now will be again or will be used against us. <laughs> Uh, so, Liberty, I remember 18 months ago when we first had our visit in Bradford, in Liberty Share Services offices. We've met Danny, uh, Dave, and the entire team. They were lovely, so it was such an energetic team, and they had so many ideas that we could innovate inside the Center of Excellence. So, Dave, as a manager of the Liberty Share Services and your strategic vision of implementing conversational AI in automating the financial processes. Dave, you oh. have a poker face. It's not your sorry, virtual sorry, assistant Andrea. answering for you. No, I thought the you. virtual yeah. assistant was going to come in there and respond for me. Yeah, it's so okay. the question on strategic vision. Uh, we had to go there, didn't we? Uh, thank you, thank you. We're here all week. Uh, here for the next 20 minutes. Um, yeah, we've been working, look, as Andrea says, we've been working with the Druid team now for, for 18 months. And our strategic vision, I have to say, has remained unshaken. Um, uh, I'm putting it out there, the Megabot concept was, a, uh, it was an iterative process and that we had <laughs> you know, a little hand in coming up with the naming technology as well, just saying. Um, but you know, we've always had this, uh, this vision in Liberty Shared Services that um, we need to meet our customers where they are. Um, and our customers, are, as with any shared service center today, are within a group of companies. So Liberty Global at the, at the top co, and then the operating businesses um, there under having a, a common set of um, back office services provided by a shared service center. Um, and in our shared service center, um, uh, how we engage with those customers has always been critical importance to us. Having the platforms that our customers use to socialize with their colleagues makes us uh, pervasive, makes us easily accessible. Having um, the ability to be able to be reached at all hours of the day or night, particularly relevant as we're serving customers across Europe and then into North America as well, so that time zone becoming super important. And uh, you know, we've always been of the belief that the closer we are to our customers' day-to-day um, -day activities, the better we'll be able to provide services to them. Uh, I have to say as well that you know, the, um, the, the more um, uh, invasive we are as well um, within those relationships, the deeper those relationships can go, so the more we understand about our customers' businesses and vice versa. And so, you know, the ability to be able to engage with customers um, using platforms that they'd ordinarily use themselves to communicate with their colleagues, so things like Microsoft Teams and being able to surface virtual assistants via uh, Microsoft Teams uh, is a no-brainer for us. So that's something that we've been, uh, we've been into for certainly the last 12 months. Um, and then I think in terms of this kind of strategic vision of, um, you know, of what it is, what it could become, uh, our ambition here is as we grow our service center out to more customers, we should be able to deploy these virtual agents just as, you know, hi, nice to meet you, I'd like to do some business with you, and here's your first virtual agent. What we didn't want was 12, 18 month time horizon for getting these things deployed. Um, to have to rebuild from scratch, uh, you know, every, every customer that we provide services to. We want to take all of those best learnings that we had from serving the customers that we do today and be able to replicate that at speed, and it was super important to us. Yeah, so I, I liked what you said now, that um, you need to have them implemented fast. So time is the key. As we heard earlier about backlogs of automation and ideas that should go in two, three, four years from now on. Where will be the technology in four years? So we saw how technology evolved from October last year to till now with the generative AI. If we postpone the automation journey, the technology will no longer be at the, the pace that we imagined four years ago. So uh, you were early adopters of basically everything that we did in Druid, like you were our first pioneers in using generative AI models, the Megabot concept, the CBA, so we've built conversational business application. We built from scratch for Sunrise, one of the companies in the group, the whole automation process for accounts payable in five languages, and we kind of replaced email. And we have now traceability, reporting. How were your employees seeing it. So I know that your motto is empower uh, employees by tech. Yeah. How, how did your employees embrace the change and uh, are they fearing for losing their jobs? So, look, it's a really good question and I, I'm going to break the answer down into two parts if that's okay. 
Um, so I think we have uh, customers um, who are um, operating companies within our group business structure and their employees and how they interact with um, our shared service center and how those interactions have changed. And then there are the internal users of the platform. So um, the uh, accounts payable agents, the uh, HR agents who uh, before conversational AI were using a combination of telephone, uh, email, you know, sometimes um, uh, some kind of ticketing tools which feel like you're kind of queuing up at the deli counter, you take your ticket and you wait to have your query responded to. Um, uh, and, and just to pick on the uh, customer perspective first, it's really important that when we deploy these virtual agents, we build them in collaboration with our customers. And so, you know, we think about, I just talked to you in the intro about um, meeting our customers where they are. And so the platform is always the first choice. So what medium do our customers use to converse with each other, with colleagues, passing messages between one another? And that is where we'd like our virtual agents to be surfaced so that they're proximate. Um, we listen to our customers' uh, experiences of using either working with our shared service center or working with um, uh, local teams um, uh, and how, where the uh, frustration, where the pain points are. Um, and we kind of, when we solve for them using virtual agents, um, we're thinking about you know, where we're going to get the most uh, impact from an employee experience and uh, that we've got a, a view, and this is, um, picks up on what we're talking about, about deploying quickly, we have a view that says that the sooner you can get these automations into a customer's business, the more we can learn from the interactions that are going through those virtual agents, the more we can then build out better and more advanced conversational flows that suit their business needs. And so for us, um, we always version our deployments. And so you know, version one very much, uh, I'd refer to it as, a, as an empty virtual agent, perhaps not yes. the correct terminology. <laughs> the idea that you've got your two-way messaging interface and that's capturing all of your data. And then we're solving um, using um, automations in the back end, connecting those automated responses up based on that particular customer need. So I think that's important. And the reason I think that's important is because from a customer experience perspective, there is an immediate gain reached from being able to interact with the shared service center in a different way. And that gain is, benefit, you know, that gain is felt on day one. So now I can use Microsoft Teams as another medium to communicate with the shared service center. And then on day two, you're picking out those most common queries that are coming through from that employee base, and you're solving them one at a time. And so in doing that, we're able to provide this immediate you know, response. And so suddenly, your customers are getting that one-to-one -one response with the most commonly asked questions. And that means that they're feeling the benefit straight away. But it also means that we get that reinforcement learning in the loops. We get an awful lot of feedback straight away on what's going well and what's not. And that helps with the customer experience. From the employee perspective, which is where I think your question was coming from, um, you know, being straight up is one of our core company values. Um, you know, recognizing that the world we live in is changing now. Um, the majority of all of our employees are experiencing a huge amount of technology-based growth in their personal lives. And I actually think that you know, we, live in a, we live in a phenomenal time, the best time I think that humanity has ever been in. Um, and it's, just, it's, you know, it's, it's all upside from here. Um, I think a lot of our employees are expecting the technology in the workplace to replicate some of the technologies that they have at home. Um, and, and Max Hanforth, our managing director, who uh, is also with me today, um, you know, often uses this analogy when we're talking to uh, our employee base. We talk to them about the change that they use, you know, the tools that they use in their personal lives and how, you know, for the first time, I think, in my working career, certainly, the tools that we have um, at home are more powerful than the tools that we were using in the office. And Druid helps even the playing field. Um, uh, you know, just going back to your, your question, I think this is, you know, open and honest conversations um, with our employees. But I also think it's, uh, you know, a, recognize, a recognition of the work that your people or our people are doing today isn't necessarily the work that they signed up to do when they first walked through the door. So when the job advert's out there and it's looking for an accountant or when the job, you know, job advert's looking for a, you know, pay, a payroll specialist or an HR specialist, you know, the majority of people are not expecting that the day is going to be spent dealing with five, 10,000 queries that come through from employees, you know, 26 different query types. So once you've done all 26, it's just repeat, repeat, repeat. And so I think this is also creating space for our people. You know, one of the, uh, the ethos of, uh, of Liberty Shared Services is creating space for businesses to transform. And that's what we try and do for our people as well. The best way we can do that is by empowering our people with tools to mean that they 
can give away the mundane. They can let the virtual assistant take that over and instead focus on adding value back into those businesses. So we'll see our employees growing through our organisation and maturing in respect to their experiences. And that allows them individual career progression. It allows us collaboratively to take on more complex activities with the customers that we work with and allows us to grow our customer base. So basically what you're saying, to summarise a bit, uh, is not pushing the, the change from top to bottom, but listening more to the needs on the ground, so from employees, from your customers, from your suppliers, and pushing the change or um, um, into the technology. So basically with Druid platform and logging in the conversational history data, we could pull out a lot of reports on what actually people were expecting to receive from the virtual assistant or assistants, uh, and then we have built the entire automation strategy for the uh, shared services department. Now, what were your key takeaways? Because there are a lot of shared services out there for large corporations, and it was earlier Siemens on the stage. So there are uh, centers of excellence that say, okay, it's rather easier to develop our, on our own different of tools and uh, um, I'm, I'm just calling uh, the OpenAI uh, API and it will work. Why did you go for a low-code, no-code platform instead of developing with your own uh, tech teams? Yeah, I think I've got to say, look, I do think this is a, uh, a flexible and a hybrid approach to kind of whether you can build, buy or rent um, you know, with technology. There's a couple of thoughts. One is you know, the landscape is changing fast. I know that we all know that, but you know, we talked about, Kira mentioned earlier, you know, um, the technology landscape that we existed in 12 months ago is, it looks rapidly different to what it looks like today, and I expect in another six or 12 months it's going to look rapidly different again. Um, and so there's definitely a, um, and we you know, heard from some of the other speakers on stage about have a business strategy, um, and you know, the strategy should, um, should drive the technology um, uh, implementation. You know, my, I agree with that. My, uh, my view is, you know, one, we don't want to be building something where there are better placed experts who can build it with us and get better outcomes faster for our customers. So fundamentally, this is about, you know, what is going to give our customer the best experience here? You know, what is the best way to implement that particular technology? Should we build it ourselves, some of the things we do? Should we buy it in or should we, um, you know, should we work with a, with a partner to, uh, to rent it? Um, and so I think that build by rent is really important. Uh, with Druid particularly, but we recognise that um, the team have got a huge amount of expertise in understanding human interactions. You know, you've proved that this morning across you know, multiple different um, customer segments where you just talked about the breadth of your know, virtual agents and, and conversational AI. And that is a breadth that you know, we would be subscaled to be able to try and replicate. And so, you know, I definitely think the right partnerships, you know, like the one that we have with Druid, um, can get you there faster um, uh, and can it help you to iterate um, uh, further. Yes, thank you. So besides being one of our customers, Liberty Share Services is also a partner of ours, and we are building together solutions that will be available in Druid um, solution libraries so other partners from the network can take and implement in different centers of excellence and then resell um, to their customer as well the solutions that we are building together. So this is an actual important topic for the partners in the room and also for the customers. Uh, we are building together with our customers and partners IP that belongs to the partners or to the customers uh, as long as they are not yet in our uh, solution library. And these solutions can be used by the entire partner network of Druid in order to uh, replicate to their customers as well. So what advice would you give as a, a closing note to other centers of excellence? Uh, look, a couple of thoughts. Um, uh, the proximate relationship that we have with our customers has absolutely been the key to our success, as is having a really deep relationship with, uh, with a partner that we know and we can trust. Um, we spend a lot of time with Druid. I should give a nod to our transformation team who are sat in the audience, so, so Chris, Danny and Shelby, um, who work you know, virtually every day um, with the Druid team. Um, I think the proximate relationship with the customer allows us to never stray too far away from a customer need. Um, we talk about technology, and one thing that Max would say if he was up here on stage, I'm sure, is, um, you know, 
um, build the solution uh, f you know, when you have a need, right? Don't just, we shouldn't just be building technology because we can. We shouldn't just be building technology because you know, it's, a, it's a great thing to do and we can kind of you know, lord it over our competitors and say, look what we've done. You know, we should actually do it because we have, we're solving a business problem, we have a customer need that we're able to solve using the right technology. And so I guess, you know, um, closing thoughts for me are that proximate relationship, really knowing your customer, understanding the changes that that business is going through. We're a shared service centre, we've got many customers, and, you know, what we have found is a lot of those changes and challenges are common. And so, you know, we, are, we adopt the approach of engage our customers, solve the common problems, bring your employees on the journey when you do that. So, Danny, I know she was at your, the, uh, the event with Raboyo uh, in Barcelona and, and was with you uh, a couple of weeks ago, Andrea. Um, but Danny, you know, often talks to me about transformation projects and about kind of going on this change journey. And she reminds me that 70% of transformation projects fail because they don't get the right level of buy-in across the organization. And I think we've touched on it earlier in some of the earlier talks when you were saying, um, you know, how do you get that kind of C-suite buy-in? I think, you know, C-suite buy-in is incredibly important. And I think, you know, helping the, um, uh, you know, the CFO or the CPO uh, understand the technology, but also the problem that it's trying to solve is critically important. The technology should almost be secondary to the fact that here is the business problem that you presented with and this is how we propose to solve it. And that, but then I also think that engagement from the people who are going to be in, using the technology, either interacting with it as, an, you know, as a customer or as an employee actually administering it in the background. Thank you, Dave. All right, thanks, Andrea. Thank you.